Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and today I am excited because I'm gonna take you along my process of flipping this dresser. And I wanna say thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video. A little bit later in the video, I will be using my Cricut to design some things for this flip. And I just wanna show you how Neiman and I came across this dresser and we'll see you back here in a minute. The dresser is only $40. So I cannot pass it up. It's a long dresser and it has kind of some mid-century vibes. So I'm really excited. We're going to pick it up right now. I did give a $10 Venmo deposit to hold it, which I mean, you know, $10, you don't really have much to lose there. We'll see you guys over there. It's in really good. I mean, it's older, but it's in good condition. Oh, yeah. It needs cleaning. I'm not going to charge you for the dust. <laughs> <laughs> As you saw, this was an amazing Facebook Marketplace find and I am ready to get started. So let's go ahead and remove the hardware. My plan right now is to keep the hardware and replace it, well not replace it, but put it back on when I'm finished with the flip. And I really love to do this most of the time and this is pretty unique hardware. This actually reminds me of a green dresser that I did back in April. This whole vibe really reminds me of that dresser. That dresser was a huge hit and so I'm really hoping that this one is gonna turn out as well as I am planning, envisioning in my head. I found a brand. Sometimes you never know where you're gonna find it, but found it inside this drawer. So it is a Dixie dresser. That's a pretty well-known furniture brand. And like I said, you wanna try to look for those brand markings because that can show you the quality of furniture and then you can also list it when you're selling it because people will know that that is a more higher quality piece of furniture. I got a full bucket of hardware here. I'm gonna set this aside so I don't lose any of the pieces and then we're gonna move on to cleaning. Here we've got my double bucket. I've got Dawn dish soap today for cleaning. So we're just gonna give this nice cleaning scrub down because we wanna get all that dirt, grime, oil, grease, dust off so that our paint can adhere to the surface. And now we rinse all that soap away. So, I'm really trying to decide, now that we're done cleaning, what my next steps are gonna be because my thing is that I don't know exactly, I know I wanna keep some wood portions, but I don't know exactly what I wanna paint and what I don't wanna paint. So that kind of puts me in a predicament for where I need to sand. I know for sure some of the spots that I'm going to paint. And then, so I might as well start there for sanding. And then once I get that paint on and I see how everything is looking, then I'll decide if I wanna paint the other parts or if I wanna leave those parts the wood look. We're gonna start sanding down the parts that I know I'm gonna paint. I decided that instead of getting my surf prep out to sand these smaller spots, I'm just gonna be using a surf prep rad pad, a fine one, so it's the blue one. Um, you can get these on surf prep's website and get 10% off with my code FFT10, or you can also order them at Melange's website 
or on Dixie Bell's website. So there are plenty of places that you can get that. So put some of those on there and your next order off of any of those spots. Again, we're just roughening up the surface. It's pretty slick and smooth right now and we want that paint to stick. I'm gonna wipe down with a microfiber cloth here. All of the dust, I need that to be gone because I don't want it to get mixed in with my paint and clog it up. But just doing that quick scuff sand really scuffed up every single area that I'm going to paint. And luckily this paint that I'm gonna be using has a built-in primer. So I'm not gonna need to prime because that paint has it already in there. Those qualities will help it stick to my surface. All right, I'm all ready to paint my favorite part. Any guesses on what my favorite color is? Pause the video right now and comment down below. What is my favorite color? What color am I gonna be using? Did you do it? All right, I'm gonna tell you now. Here we go. I've been wanting to use this color for a while. I've had it for several months and it is from Melange and the color is Copperhead orange. We're going bold, and even just loves when I say bold, unique, all of that. But seriously, I think that it's also this specific color of orange isn't like, whoa, that's orange. It's a little bit more of a toned down, a little bit of a darker orange. I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I'm going to try my best not to get it on the wood without taping. I know. It's a risk, but I'm willing to take it. I think that I can do a pretty good job with this artist's brush. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, I'm already finding that the key is to not get too much paint, but I'm also loving the qualities of the melange paint for this specific job because it's self-leveling. So even though I kind of have to go in several different ways, it's going to end up leveling itself out in the end. Okay, coat number one is finished up with the orange and it's looking good. Obviously, we're gonna need a second coat. We'll see about a third coat, but I'm, I, right now I like the top staying like this. Uh, I think we'll ultimately decide once we put the drawers all the way back in and I'll definitely do that probably after the second coat. There's still quite a bit of paint left in there so you know this paint goes a long way. If you haven't tried out Melange paints you guys are missing out. Head over to Melange's website use my code FLIP10 10% off their entire website and you get free shipping if you spend $85 and you will not regret your decision to buy some melange paint. So we're gonna let this first coat dry and then we'll come back for coat number two. We're back for coat number two. So I'm just gonna start on the drawers again with my artist brush and do the same that I did for the first coat and then we'll move on to the base.
Code number two is all finished. And to be honest, I'm gonna need a third coat. So sometimes with paints, you just never know if you're gonna need two or three coats, but I can just tell that I can still see some of that darkness popping through from that original color. So I'm gonna do a third coat for good measure. So we'll do that once the second coat's all dry. All right, we're over here in the office. Like I told you guys before, this video is sponsored by Cricut. So we are gonna dive in and I'm gonna show you how we can get a little bit creative with our furniture flips using the Cricut. You can use the Cricut Joy, the Cricut Explore, or the Cricut Maker, whatever one you have or whatever one you have the desire to get for yourself. This thing has so, so many different opportunities for you to be creative, whether it be with furniture flipping or decorations around your home or creating shirts there are endless opportunities for you guys my idea with the Cricut today is to take these drawers that were on the inside of the doors of this dresser and I'm going to tie it all together by putting an orange stenciling in here. This is gonna be fun because I've never done something like this. I have seen some other flippers do this and I just love the idea. Oftentimes I have trouble finding stencils that I truly like and enjoy. I decided that I'm gonna use my Cricut to create a stencil that I've never seen before on furniture. I've got my Cricut Explore Air here, and then I got some stencil vinyl, which Cricut has available so that it is a little bit of a thicker vinyl and it has that sticky part on the back so you can stick it to your drawers do the painting and then take it off and that's really going to help we are going to head over to my design space and i'm going to pop in my design the stencil that i want to use so i am going to head to my uploads and i already picked out a stencil that i found So now that I've got it into my design space here, I am going to say make it. So it can t it knows that I've got a larger mat. Our next step is to lay down the stencil vinyl. Now that we've got our stencil vinyl on there, we're gonna load it up into our Cricut machine. Okay, we've got our stencil all cut out here. So I'm gonna remove it from the pad and you weed out all of the innards of the design. I chose this kind of leafy design, kind of neutral, not really any specific style or anything like that. Thought it would be nice and go pretty well with the dresser that I'm doing. It looks like I've weeded all of it. Now I've got a stencil that I really enjoy and that I specifically picked out for this dresser. I didn't have to go to the store and just pick from those. I got to browse the internet and find the one that I thought would fit for this dresser specifically. We got our stencil down. So I'm just gonna take some of the same paint I used from Melange, the Copperhead Orange, and we're gonna apply that on there. First layer of paint is on and I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll do another layer of paint. I did a really light coat, but just knowing from the other part of the dresser that I needed to do multiple coats, I'm gonna do multiple coats on this as well. And then we'll take the stencil off after the next coat and move on to the next two drawers. 
first coat is dry so we're ready for coat number two and it looks like two coats should be enough so right after I'm done painting I'm going to remove the stencil while it is still wet So I ended up finding out obviously that I'm not gonna be able to reuse the stencil. I really think that this will create just a fun little surprise inside when you open up those doors on the dresser. It'll be just a little bit of an unexpected design there. So I'm really pleased with the way it turned out and I can't wait to see what it looks like in the dresser. Now that we're back and we've got all three of our drawers stenciled and I did end up putting a third coat on of the entire dresser off camera because it just needed that little bit of an extra coating. Now we are finally ready for top coat and hardware. So we're gonna start with the top coat. I'm gonna be using the Polyvine Wax Finish Varnish. So this kind of gives you the best of both worlds where it'll kind of look and act as a wax, but you brush it on just like a regular liquid top coat. And I'm gonna also add a little bit of the paint because I just don't wanna have any streak marks, so that'll help eliminate that and help it blend right into the paint. Now that I'm thinking about it, some the drawers with the stencils, I'm gonna go ahead and do now without the orange paint because I don't want the orange paint on the brown wood part. So now that those three drawers are all top coated, I'm gonna add a little bit of the Copperhead Orange to my top coat so that I can ensure to lessen the streak marks. This just takes a tiny bit. All right, we're gonna move on to the drawer fronts now, and then we'll be finished up with the top coat, and we'll move on to our last step, which is the hardware. So this polyvine is probably one of my top favorite Top coats it just goes on so so easily and then it dries so smooth like I can't even tell that there is you know like a top coat on there which is just amazing and then that just gives it the utmost protection once this dresser is all put together and being used you know you don't you really don't want your work to be dented or dinged and so that's why a top coat is one of the most important parts I kind of say that prep is also one of the most important parts, but those two go hand in hand. The beginning and the ending of your process are some of the most important parts in order to get a quality piece of furniture done. So I am gonna go ahead and put these drawers in and then we're gonna head over to spruce up the old hardware and then we will have a finished product. I am so excited and I cannot wait to see it all put together. We've got some people working on our roof, so I'm gonna talk pretty fast here. But what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take the old hardware that was on there already, and then I'm going to be applying Dixie Bell's gold gilding wax to just spruce it up and become that gold color again. You guys have seen me do this several times. Um, I think I do like this way over spray painting, but if you're in a hurry, Spray paint is fine as long as you top coat it, but the gold gilding wax really does give it that extra good look to me. So that's what we're gonna do on this hardware. All 
hardware with gold gilding wax covered. So we're just gonna let that dry for a while here and then we'll kind of buff it out with a lint-free cloth and then we'll be able to attach. Okay, we are getting so close to being finished here. My last step is just to go ahead and attach that hardware and it's gonna be finished. So I'm really liking the way that this turned out. It is very unique, um, but I really am happy that I chose to keep some of these wood tones. Let's get that hardware on. Okay guys, you know what that means, we're finished. You know, I put a lot of work into this piece, but also it could have been more work. Just going around these little details, this, this dresser is really all about details, if you think about it. I went around these details very slowly and precisely. I added the detail of the gold hardware. And then of course, my favorite part is I added the detail of the Cricut made stencil. That was a super fun addition that I really enjoyed doing with you guys. And I hope that you also learned a little bit of how to use the Cricut a little bit more. And not only can you use it for your furniture, but like I said before, you can use it for so many different things. I'll link some Cricuts down below in the description. There is the Cricut Maker, which is the top tier Cricut. There's the Cricut Air, which is what I used. And then there's the little mini Cricut Joy, which also has so many awesome things that can be done with it even though it's so tiny. I just love that one too. And I think I am going to be listing this one on Facebook Marketplace for around 400 to 450. Um, I think it's just a, such a solid piece. It's the mid-century modern vibes. It is unique so I have a feeling that it's probably going to sit on there for a little while but you know I've been surprised before, so hopefully I'll be surprised again, and hopefully this one will sell pretty fast. Let's head over to the staging wall. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I posted this just a couple of days ago, and I haven't gotten any hits, but like I said, I think it'll take just a little bit longer than maybe a normal piece. One, because it's more unique, and two, because I am asking for $450, and that's a pretty high asking price for just a single dresser but I'm confident and this is very solid so I think that it's totally worth the amount that I am asking for it I really enjoyed creating the stencil with my Cricut thank you to Cricut again for sponsoring this video I had an amazing time doing that and I can see myself doing that again on some future furniture projects but this time I think I might try a little bit of an easier stencil and I'll be sure to use that transfer tape to transfer my stencil to my drawers. So if you guys are interested, everything is linked down below in the description. Everything Cricut, everything Melange. Head over to Melange's website and use my code Flip 10 for 10% off the entire site. They've got so many amazing products and they're constantly pushing out new ones as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Get subscribed down below and we'll be back for more on Monday to finish out the month with some new paint to me, new to me paint. So we would love to have you there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.